This is the simulator. This is on our one form of platform. Here you can see the map on the left hand side here. You can zoom in and out. You can scroll around. The user is this blue star right here, and the results are these brightly colored pins here in Trumbull, Norwalk, and Greenwich. There will always be three pins in one forma. Once you get into try rating, you'll have you can have more or you can have fewer. It varies somewhat. And if we zoom in here, this black box here, this is the user's viewport. When you are in try rating, the viewport will be bright pink and it will have a little cell phone symbol in the middle. The user icon will also be a person, so it'll be a little blue person, and then it might later on be a little gold person. Like I said, you can also encounter more or fewer pins. Now, this is a good overview. The other next most important information is uh, in the upper right hand corner here. This is our query box. In the query box, we have the locale. So NUS, we have the query, Apple Store. Then we have the age of the viewport, fresh. If the viewport is fresh, we want to be working off the viewport. If the viewport is stale, we want to ignore it. So in this case, we have a fresh viewport. We have our user inside the viewport. So we're going to be working off that. But I'm actually going to come back to that the discussion of the viewport and its freshness in a minute. And I'm going to come back to this first question here because I want to look at this result and I want to tackle the address accuracy first. The reason why I want to tackle the accuracy first is it's the simple part. It's straightforward. It's double checking with real world information. And that's easier to do than going through the relevance. There's no judgment calls there. So this is Apple Trumbull. So I don't think it's this pin down in Greenwich. I don't think it's this pin in Norwalk. I think it's this pin up here in Trumbull. There we go, Apple Trumbull. So I'm going to zoom in on this pin up in Trumbull just so I can get a sense of what this location is. Oh, look at that. This looks like a mall. We have a single big building, lots of different stores, tons of stores surrounded by a big, big parking lot. So this looks to be a mall. Apple Trumbull. Now, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to double check this address. I'm going to make sure there's no missing components. So I'm looking for a street number. I'm looking for a street, roadway, avenue, whatever. I'm looking for a locality. I'm looking for a state slash province. I'm looking for a postal slash zip code. And I'm looking for the country. Note that the country is required for all regions in the one form of certification too. When you are in tri rating, it may not be required. That depends on your locale. So now I've confirmed that I've got all the components of my address that I'm expecting. So I could go down to my address accuracy here and I could preemptively say correct. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to I'm going to do something else first. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to double check that this address lines up with the real world. So I'm going to control C. I'm going to open up a new tab. I'm going to go to my Google Maps. You can use Bing as well. You could use Apple. Doesn't really matter. I'm going to Control C, press Enter. And there we go. So this takes me to looks to be the exact same location. And this is why I zoomed in first hand. Um, looks to be the exact same location. And let's zoom out just to double check. Yeah, that's Trumbull, Connecticut. Yep, Trumbull, Connecticut. So this is in the right place. This is where we expected to find our result. However, our result isn't actually coming up. We're not getting an info box or anything. So I'm going to cancel this and I'm going to repeat the user search. Let's zoom out a bit. Cover the cover the Southern Connecticut area where we have our three results. And I'm going to repeat the user search. Note right there the presence of an ad. You want to always ignore ads. They are never useful information. So I'm going to completely ignore that and I'm just going to look for Apple Store, see locations. There we go. We've got an Apple Store here in Greenwich. We've got our Apple Store in Sono. We've got our Apple Trumbull Store. So let's have a look at this location. All right, that these photos here, they look to be of an interior store, interior opening store, like the kind you'd find in a mall. 
Yep. There's no exterior. So yeah, that's probably the right location. But to confirm the address, I'm actually going to scroll down. Google is not a source. I can't cite Google. We Google lies and has incorrect information. So I'm actually going to try and find the company website. And here we go. You just press this button right here. This will open up the company website. And there you go, Apple Trumbull. Note the URL. The URL actually has Trumbull in it, which is fantastic. That's a sign that I can use this URL in my comment later. And if I scroll down, look at that. That's the that's the same. That's the image we already saw. This is the same store, right? Looks to be the same store, though. Admittedly, you can't really tell Apple stores apart. They all kind of look the same. But here we go. Here's the address. Bingo, bango. 5065 Main Street, Trumbull, Connecticut, 06611. Let's go back to one former. 5065 Main Street, Trumbull, Connecticut, 06611, United States. Fantastic. That looks to be a correct address. If I can scroll properly, there we go. Correct. So I correct with formatting issue, you would use if there was a minor misspelling. Incorrect, you would use if there was something actually wrong with the address. Note with that when you mark something as incorrect, you have to also check the appropriate box. So if the street number was wrong, I check street number, so on and so forth. Pretty straightforward. Do not forget to check the appropriate box. Now for PIN, we've kind of already confirmed this, right? Because we found that this is the right location. But to really confirm this, and remember Google is not a source, I'm going to look at Google's real world information, and that's their satellite. And this is, we've already confirmed this is a mall, looks to be all one big rooftop. We've confirmed based on the images, there's no real way to determine exactly where the, the Apple Store is. So the pin, that's pretty good. That's pretty perfect, in fact. It's on the right roof. Uh, we don't have an obvious way of making it you know, better. So let's have a look here. And that's exactly what we've got in try rating. So I think that's a pretty perfect pin. And for locations like this with lots of intern, um, weird internal geometry, uh, you know, and there's one rooftop, perfect is exactly what we're looking for. If the pin had wandered out into the parking lot here, then it would become approximate. If it crosses a roadway, such as this Merritt Parkway here, it becomes wrong. And in fact, the boundaries of this of this mall are very clear. Here, let, let me show you in the satellite view. It's actually better. So if I zoom out here, you can see the boundaries of the mall are very clear. Right? It's this big ring road around the outside. So I'd say the pin would actually be wrong if it wandered into this woodland here. Right? That's very clearly outside the bounds of this of this mall. If the pin had wandered into one of these buildings over here, you might be able to call this next door. I don't think so. Um, next door you would use if the if it's like the next building over. So in this, so like if we were looking for number 25 and instead number 29 was where the pin was located, that's next door. Right? The next rooftop over. And next door we want to use for rooftops exclusively. So it was the next rooftop over. So I think that pin is perfect. That address is correct. Now for the name, we want to consider the classification as well as the name accuracy itself. So we've already confirmed the name with our company website here, Apple Trumbull. And we've also confirmed this, how they prefer their name to be capitalized, which is they like the A capitalized and nothing else. Some companies like to have their whole name capitalized, like Ikea or Lego. And we want to respect that. But in this case, Apple Trumbull, that's exactly right. That's exactly what the company calls itself. So that name is perfect. Or rather, it's correct. Now for the classification. The classification is either correct or incorrect, never partial. So if there's any misspellings, if there's anything wrong with the classification, the whole thing is wrong. It's incorrect. In this case, electronic store. That's a pretty spot on classification for Apple. Um, there's nothing really wrong with that classification. So it's pretty descriptive.
pretty accurate. So I think this is a pretty, pretty correct name accuracy. Note the parsley here. That's exclusively for if there's a misspelling in the, in the store name itself, not a misspelling in the classification. Incorrect would be if there was something wrong with the classification or the stores just named the wrong thing. So minor misspellings are things like if something was, if a Burger King was missing the R and was instead Bugger King or Berg King, I was missing one of the R's, that's a minor misspelling. That's partially correct. But if it's, say, IKEA and it's missing the K and it's IEA, that's pretty, I think that's a bit more than minor, right? That's not comprehensible. That's not an easy misspelling to conclude, to figure out what store you're looking for. So I think that would be incorrect. In this case, however, both our classification and our name are correct. Classifications need to be not misleading. So if the classification for Apple was, app, was iPhone, was phones and laptops, that's pretty accurate. That's the primary business. That's what Apple sells. However, if it was something like electronics accessories, well, yes, Apple sells accessories. You know, they sell headphones, they sell keyboards, but that's not their primary business. Their primary business is laptops and cell phones. So either the classification needs to be general enough to include the primary business, or it needs to be the primary business. Burgers for Burger King. Now let's consider the relevance. And we can also answer this question up here. Let's zoom out a second. Now I'm going to go back to the fresh viewport. The user is here. They're inside the fresh viewport. They're in Norwalk here. They're looking for an Apple store. They probably just went to the aquarium and their, their iPhone fell in a fish tank or got stolen by a porpoise or something like that. They need a new iPhone. So they're looking for an Apple store. The user is inside a fresh viewport. So they are looking for the closest location to them, to them, to their viewport. In this case, that would be this Sono collection here in Norwalk, the Apple Sono collection. And remember, we've already confirmed that that location exists with our, with our search in Google. And you can do the same thing, like you can corroborate this information multiple different times if you want to. You can go to Bing, you can go to Apple, you can go to Google. Um, it's generally preferable to corroborate at least twice. So in this case, we have one form as information and we have Google's information. That's twice. If there's a conflict, like let's say Google had different information than one former, then maybe you want to consider also doing a search in Bing. And if all three of those are different information, do a search in Apple. If they all have different information, yeah, maybe you can't verify that information. Maybe that location doesn't exist. In this case, however, we can confirm the location exists. We've corroborated it twice. So this is going to be an excellent result for the user. This is exactly what they're looking for. It's right next to the viewport. It's right next to the tank where the porpoise stole their iPhone. So this is perfect. Well, it's not perfect. It's excellent. Sorry. Let me use the language of relevance. These other two results, the location up here in Trumbull and location down here in Greenwich, they're the second best result in either direction. And they're kind of equidistant as well, right? They're about 10 miles. So Trumbull's 10 miles north, Greenwich is about 10 miles south. Greenwich is technically closer, but I mean, honestly, they're, they're very similar, very similar distances, likely very similar travel time. So. I think they're both going to be good. We're going to demote them one level because they're not the best result, but they're the second best result. And they're both going to be quite similar, but they're in completely different directions. They're in completely different locations. So I'm going to say both Greenwich and Trumbull here are going to be good. That's what I'm going to rate it. Good there. If it was the third best result, it would be acceptable. Fourth best, bad, so on and so forth. That's a good rule of thumb for chains, especially if the chain is very similar from one store to the next. So like a Starbucks or a Burger King or a McDonald's, 
or an Apple store. Each one of those locations is very similar to the next, so we can demote quite aggressively. But remember, you can still have multiple locations at the same tier. They happen to be just in different directions, right? We don't want to we don't want to be choosing the direction of travel for our users. So that's good, and it's going to be a distance prominence issue. The user intent is to find an Apple Store, and they have found an Apple Store, so it is not a user intent issue. Now let's answer this question here. Now this is an interesting question. You won't encounter it very much when you first start out, but you will encounter it a lot once you get into production. What this question is asking is it's actually asking about the query itself. It's not asking about the result. And what this question is asking, somewhere in the universe, does there exist a navigational result for this particular query regardless of whether it has been returned as a result or not. So in this case, the user is looking for Apple stores. Um, there's a lot of Apple stores in the world. Just going to get that out there. There's a couple hundred of them. In fact, I think there might even be a couple thousand of them. So there's a lot of Apple stores in the world. This is a very general search. There's always going to be at least two results. And in particular, there's always going to be lots of results that fully satisfy the user intent. For something to be navigational, it has to be the specific result of the specific user search. The Empire State Building. The, the Space Needle. SeaTac Airport. These are specific locations that are unambiguous if I search for them as my query. Like if I if my query was Empire State Building, well, that's unambiguously, I'm looking for the Empire State Building in the middle of New York City, right? That's unambiguous, that's gonna be navigational. If I look for a specific address, if I look for 5065 Main Street, Trumbull, Connecticut, you know, that's gonna return one result. That is the navigational result. In this case, we have a very general query. So no, there's going to be no navigational results. And that's it. So I've now answered everything. But before I hit submit, I'm actually going to write a comment. Comments are mandatory. Every single query requires a comment. So in this case, I'm going to write four or five words about the accuracy and four or five words about the relevance. You can write more. I wouldn't advise writing less. We want to see your thinking, right? We want to, we want to understand why you made the decision you did. Nothing wrong with accuracy. We can spell it correctly. And I'm actually going to cite the company website. And this is a very good company website to cite because it actually has the name of the business in it. Trumbull it has the name, sorry, the name of the location in it. Some companies will not have very good URLs like this. They instead they'll use like an app or whatever on their website. So Apple has a different web page for every single one of their stores, but Burger King or and McDonald's, for example, they have an app on their website. So that's not very useful. They have a location finder app. That's not very useful. But here, like if an, if an auditor were to come along and see this comment, they know exactly what, where you got your information. They'd understand everything you have to say. And then I put the same for relevance. One step due to closer, better result. And you don't need to use so many words. You could just say demoted relevance, better result in Norwalk or something. And that's it. You hit submit. Perfect pin. Correct address. Name actually is correct. Relevance is good with the distance problems issue, and no, there are no navigational results. That's exactly how you do it. So just go through each step. The strategy I would advise, start with the address. Consider whether there's anything missing. Consider the address accuracy. Consider the pin accuracy. Consider the name accuracy. Then move on to relevance. You'll answer a lot of the questions about the relevance by doing your search, by doing your search for this address, 
in another mapping service. You'll answer a lot of questions about the relevance by going to the company website. Now let's take a very brief look at try rating. So this is the try rating platform and I've already loaded up a query. You can see here on the left, we have the same kind of map. Here you can see the blue user and their pink viewport with a phone symbol. One big difference with the user is you actually have the user's latitude and longitude in try rating. So even if the map doesn't load properly, you should still be able to answer everything about this, everything about the query. Because you have the user location and you have the location of each result. Now, in try rating, you also have every result listed on the right here. Now, I would have thought this is obvious, but the result you are grading is the one with questions underneath. Once you get into production, you'll start encountering queries where every single result will have questions. So answer every single one. Simple as that. We're not going to go through the whole thing right now, but that's just a brief look at the UI. In the upper left hand corner here, you have the task ID. If you have any questions, give us the task ID. Save the task ID, give it to us. That way we can look up the, qu the query in try reading and we can look at the same information you're looking at. Estimated rating time right here, three minutes. That is for production users. We do not expect you to be that fast. We expect you to be more eight to 12 minutes starting out. Focus on understanding and accuracy. Speed will come with time. Now in the upper right hand corner here, you can submit your ratings. This button, this button right here, release survey. Do not press this. I'm going to repeat that. Do not press this. There is no reason for you to be releasing surveys in the Mars exam, the Venus exam, or the Earth exam. They are very well audited. There are no problems with any of the questions, any of the queries, sorry. If there are, if you are encountering issues, it is almost certainly a you problem, not a problem with the query. Once you get into production, you may encounter queries with issues. That's when you use the release survey button. However, we do ask that you get in contact with us first because it does, if you release a lot of surveys, it does flag your account and you can get removed. This rating guidelines here, this button will open up a full PDF with the full guidelines given to us by the client. I highly recommend opening that up when you first get into try reading, downloading it and keeping it on your computer. Reference it frequently while taking the exams. And we will often give you answers when you ask us questions by citing the appropriate sections of the guidelines. So it is an important resource that you keep on your computer. It's very, and it's, it's very useful. There's a lot of very good examples in there. It explains a lot of everything. All right, and with that, thank you for coming to the simulator call. Uh, we will now be opening it up for questions.